Secretary Chu, it's great to see you again. Let me begin by thanking you for visiting the University of Maine last June to see the very exciting research and development technology that is underway in the area of deep water offshore wind. I would say to my friend and colleague from Tennessee that deep water wind does not face the same challenges as land-based wind because it can be located out of sight and the winds are much stronger and more persistent offshore, so you have more energy produced. But there is a need for investment into the technology so that the challenges of siting wind turbines in deep water offshore uh, can be met. And I'm very excited about the work that is going on at the University of Maine. Uh, to bring the secretary up to date, a key milestone was reached just this month in which three scale models of floating turbines were successfully tested. And that is providing key data to advance the technology. But one of my concerns is that our country should not lose the global race in developing deep water offshore wind technology. And if you look at this chart, and I believe uh, the secretary has it as well, uh, we are losing the race right now. Consented means permitted for those who are not into the lingo here. But as you can see, Europe is making considerable investments in deep water offshore wind. Asia is as well, while the United States really lags. And yet this offers the potential of providing clean domestic energy to large population centers in close proximity to wind resources. I'm pleased to see the investment that the Department of Energy is making, and just for the record, to make sure that I understand the department that you've submitted. It's my understanding that you've just delivered the operating plan for the remainder of 2011 to the Appropriations Committee this week. And it includes funding under the category of Advanced Technology Demonstration Project dash wind energy. And just to clarify, is the intention of the department to do a competitive solicitation for deep water wind energy using some portion or all of that funding? Um. I don't, if, if it's deep water, yes. the answer is yes. <laughs> <laughs> and that is the answer I was hoping to hear, so I'm pleased that that is the case. Uh, Senator Alexander made a very important point that we have these technologies that are not going to be able to move forward unless we have a partnership with the federal government, with state government, and with the private sector. And I believe that that, that investment of $26.3 uh, million will help jumpstart the investment. I would note that the state of Maine has passed a bond issue and is providing millions of dollars for this as well. And we've also put together a consortium of, of private companies in Maine uh, that are investing. And we're working with a company that is partially owned uh, by the Netherlands that also is investing in this technology. But it really is very exciting. Can you give me some idea of what the timetable for putting out the solicitation for that 26 million is. Yeah, I, I would need to get back to you on the details, of, but we, we hope it's soon. Uh, again, uh, 
See, this is really good. You're in a roll in a couple of weeks. <laughs> that also is uh, great news because I think it is important that we move forward. I think the best news is uh, Senator Alexander actually said a kind word for wind. <laughs> <laughs> Believe me, that made my day. I sent him a little note. <laughs> and I, because I read his book. <laughs> Uh, I mentioned that there is a consortium in Maine, it's called the Deep Sea Wind Consortium, that is led by the University of Maine, but it's a broad-based mm. collaborative effort that involves 35 partners, including the state of Maine, academic institutions, nonprofits, utilities, industry leaders, and what we've found is that kind of collaborative, interdisciplinary approach is absolutely essential when you're trying to spur innovation further. When there are a lot of federal agencies that are involved in the effort to jumpstart offshore wind, and I'm hoping that we can see a similar collaboration among the federal agencies and departments that are involved so that we can avoid duplication and maximize efficiency and stretch those resources. Could you share with us how the Department of Energy is working, particularly with the Department of Interior, which has some permitting responsibilities, but there are other federal partners as well, like the National Science Foundation, the Fish and Wildlife right. Services? Yes, I, I think uh, because <laughs> these are you know, uh, largely going to be in federal waters, uh, that um, it is the Department of Interior's uh, jurisdiction that they it, it, uh, are very supportive of this. Uh, but of course, you know, you you have to go through the necessary requirements uh, because uh, of exactly what you said. There, you know, there could be environmental concerns, and you have to make sure that you examine them and are thoughtful about them. But but. I think there's a general acknowledgement. If you can get the technology to work, and that's an if, and so it's a research, uh, the opportunity for offshore wind and deep water wind is there. It's closer to population centers. It's steadier, and the siding problems uh, are are uh, and not as great uh, as long as you know environmentally uh, we, we make sure that that's okay. So the opportunities are great, but it's it's a, one of reliability and technology, and again. And so that's why we chose to shift the research. Uh, we think onshore winds a, is a mature technology. And so to, to focus on, on the, the more innovative aspects, and that's why we repositioned the program. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you for your efforts, and thank you, Madam Chair. Yeah, thank you very much, Senator Thank Collins. you, Senator Alexander. Um, Senator Murkowski. 